In spite of the availability of effective drugs and vaccines, the battle against the infectious diseases is far from being over. Not only do they continue to cause a large number of infections and deaths, mostly in developing countries, but the emergence and spread of antimicrobial resistance is now threatening to undermine our ability to treat infections and save lives. The factors that lead to resistance depend on the disease in question, like malaria and AIDS and other infectious diseases. However, according to Dr. Paul Roype of Georgetown University, even though scientists know how the drug resistance works in parasites, they have yet to figure out the cause of the resistance on a fundamental level. But we don't really know how it starts. Where does it come from? We do know that, that uh, malarial drug resistance arose independently in multiple locations around the globe. We know it arose in Southeast Asia differently than it arose in Africa, and we know that it arose differently in, in uh, certain Pacific Rim countries as well. Um, also in South America, it arose independently. So we know when drug resistance first appeared on these various continents, we know that, that, that those um, events are independent of one another. So um, antimalarial drug resistance has not necessarily spread from one region of the globe to the next. It, it does do that now, but um, 20, 30 years ago, um, it arose independently in these different locations. Contrary to common belief, malaria resistance does not affect a certain age group or are any particular people more susceptible to it than others because of their physical conditions. The risk, therefore, has nothing to do with the specifics of a person, but more so to their location. Anyone that is at risk of getting malaria is at risk of getting drug-resistant malaria. And anyone that lives in a region where drug-resistant malaria is more prevalent has a greater chance of getting drug-resistant malaria. So it's nothing about the person per se. It's, 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 it has to do with, with where you live and what the incidence of drug-resistant malaria is in that location. Both resistant and non-resistant malaria have the same effects on a person. The initial stages of infection do not vary, however, there is a variation in how responsive the fashion will be to available therapy. Researchers have made breakthroughs in the ability to test the blood to determine which parasite has infected the patient. We can take a small blood sample from a patient, do what's called PCR to look at the gene sequence of the DNA from the parasite and conclude from that evidence whether the person is carrying a parasite that is drug resistant or drug sensitive. These are very, very important new developments. Um, they're somewhat expensive and they're not 100% reliable, but in the very near future, we will be able to tell with a very simple blood test whether someone has a drug resistant infection. According to Dr. Roype, it's important to look at malaria patients in terms of the other diseases and the physiology of the person. People affected by other disease tend to have a higher resistance to malaria drugs than those that don't. There are also those that have some kind of immunity to malaria. But it, it is very, very important to consider the other diseases that someone might have if they have malaria. In general, they will respond more poorly to drugs for a variety of factors, not just the drug resistance issue. There are people that um, have a, a a partial, we call it a partial immunity to malaria. They are still able, uh, they, they will still get malaria, but the symptoms that they show will be less severe. Their chances of dying from the disease are less. Um, so there are people that um, show a partial immunity to malaria. The impact of antimicrobial resistance could be greatly reduced through the use of integrated management of childhood illnesses, better prescribing practices and training for health workers. Scientists also recommend certain therapies to those affected by drug-resistant malaria. In the last few years, the last two or three years, uh, many scientists around the globe that have been working on this problem have discovered that there really are different varieties of drug-resistant malaria. 
there, it's, it's, it's an oversimplification to say we have drug-sensitive malaria and then drug-resistant malaria. We actually have many, many different types of drug-resistant malaria. Even with regard to one specific drug, such as chloroquine, you might think that all chloroquine-resistant parasites are the same, but actually they're not. The chloroquine-resistant parasites found in South America genetically are a little different than the ones that are typically found in Africa and that are typically found in uh, Thailand and so on. Um, each one of these varieties of drug-resistant malaria show different responses to additional drugs. Although antimicrobial resistance affects industrialized and developing countries alike, its impact is far greater in developing countries. The problem is that the switch from normally less expensive first-line drugs to second or third-line drugs involves a dramatic escalation in the price of treatment. In some of the poorest countries, the prohibitive cost of lengthy treatment and replacement drugs means some diseases are too expensive to treat and lives are at risk.